Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, y'all. Hey, this is Dr. Scenario. Co. For those who are new, maybe you're watching this uh, for the first time, whether it be YouTube, I have a podcast, Instagram, however you're watching it, welcome to my channel, whatever. Uh, so for those who are new, um, uh, who am I? I am a licensed therapist. Uh, and I'm bold about my love for Jesus. <laughs> okay. So I mean, I give you faith-based principles to bring about lasting change. Uh, I always tell people in advance, this is not therapy. Okay. So, all right. Uh, I own a private practice called Kingdom Creative Counseling. We are located downtown Greensboro, but I want to thank those who did at least give me some congratulations. Oh, we're actually going to be moving. I've been so excited. I've been trying to keep it in, but, um, just signed my lease for my new office and it is beautiful. So I'm so excited about that. Um, but it's located in Greensboro, like literally 10 minutes down the street from my current office. All right. So, but thank you for your congratulations on that. I do really appreciate that. I want to give a testimony of some of the things that God has done. It's not necessarily to brag, not today though, not to brag, but to just know that, and I said this before, it's not throwing shade, but when people try to bury you with the foolery, with their lives and how God continues to bless and uh and that's been my story and so <laughs> i'm going to tell you my testimony about how god has continued to open up doors um after a really tough season so thank you jesus for that um what else i was gonna say oh so i've written a whole bunch of books i've written 60 books i think i'm at 62 right now i'm gonna recent release another one before the end of the year no okay i can't talk to the y'all hold on i'm gonna release another one for the end of um this month and that is called the business of leaning for business um and entrepreneur leaders and so that's going to be dead. I'm working on my next project. Um, I have training courses and all kinds of fun things. Uh, it was just go to my website at www.drsamiracobra.com. Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, a topic called Deborah. Uh, now, for those who don't know, I had done this topic before. And I'm not sure when it was. I don't even know if it was this year. Maybe it was last year. But I talked about how um, God awoke me out of my sleep and he said, you're Deborah, you're a Deborah. And I said, okay, thank you, Jesus. I didn't know what a Deborah was. So we're going to talk about, and so I did a brief teaching on that, but uh, I want to give you some more clarity. Plus I wanted to do another podcast on how do you know that you're a Deborah? What's the difference between Deborah and Jezebel? They are not the same, honey. We are not the same, okay? And why you need a Deborah on your team, regardless of what team that is. If you are a, a business leader, corporate leader, organizational leader, ministry leader, you need two types of people and one that is in, in Ezra and you need a Deborah, okay? And so you need these people on your team. And so I need you to discern who is and who is not your Deborah, okay? And, and I want to encourage those who are Deborahs. Um, again, even though this is not therapy, what we do, I meet so many people who have a very powerful anointing on their life and there's certain warfare that you were experiencing. It's not necessarily because of what you, uh, it's because it's not because of who you are or character deficit, it's because of what you carry. And so whenever you have an anointing, whatever that anointing is, it does not necessarily have to be a prophet. It could be an anointing for business, an anointing for uh, help. It could, you're going to experience some opposition. And so I like to try to uh, understand not only who you are mentally, emotionally, but also spiritually and what God has called you to. And I do help people uh, work through that in therapy sessions. So we, we thank you for that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Welcome you to this day. Oh, another one. Y'all, really, I'm really excited with this one. I'm excited. The next one, y'all, make sure you subscribe to whatever you're watching this from because the next one is going to be a good one, okay? We're going to talk about 10 reasons, 10 signs someone is obsessed with you and what you should do about it. And yes, my beloveds, you will find people that are obsessed with you. And there are some telltale signs because first off, it's all flattery, love bombing. They start becoming like you. They start controlling you. And you cannot really be in a healthy relationship with someone who's obsessed with you. Then they start turning, their admiration will turn to resentment. Then they end up hating you. It just all kinds of, you know, it just, everybody that comes into your life is, 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 does not admire you. There's a difference between, I don't want to get, <laughs> I'm excited about the next one too, but hold on, hold on for one minute. Okay. I know I'm rambling. It's just, I'm, I'm gonna do this one time okay and I'm not gonna edit it and that's all you'll get <laughs> but sometimes um when you deal with people who are broken believe it or not um their admiration uh turns into idolization 
And then when you don't meet up their expectations, because God is not going to send you anybody that idolizes you. He is going to send you people that respect you and admire you. It turns to hatred. It gets really, really weird. And so I want to talk to you about that. So make sure you stay tuned. I get, like I said, subscribe. And we're going to talk about 10 reasons, 10 ways, you know, someone is obsessed with you and what you should do about it. But today we're going to talk about Deborah. So who was Deborah? If you read Judges chapter four, and like I said, prior to the Lord really speaking to me and telling me I was a Deborah, I, I had heard of Deborah and I hadn't, I, I never really studied it in detail because it's one of those things like, you know, even if you love to study the Bible, as I, I just love to study the Bible, I, you don't study everything there is. In, well, at least I don't. I don't think you can study everything there is to know. And so when God spoke to me, I said, huh, okay. And then I ended up really doing a lot of research about who Deborah was. And I was like, oh, I see Jesus. Okay, I got you. This is not meant to brag at all, but again, to give you symptoms because there are other Debras out there. I need you to walk confidently and securely in your position as a Debra. Um, uh, so something else I won't say. <laughs> so I'm like, huh, okay. And so then I read a book by uh, uh, Michelle McCain, I believe it is. And it was, uh, it put so many things in perspective. I loved that book. I devoured it. I mean, I devoured it, okay? And so uh, I'm going to reference that book if you want to know, get a really good book, breaks it down real plain, um, get the Deborah Anointing by uh, Michelle McCain. I don't know her personally, but it was a really, really good book. So who was Deborah? <clears throat> when you read Judges chapter four, the Bible tells us who Deborah was and the position that she held. One, Deborah was a wife. She Now, now I'm not telling you that you're going to have a wife named Deborah. I'm just telling you she was somebody's wife. <laughs> she was a woman in leadership. She was a prophet the Bible says prophetess and she was a judge. And so a judge is, uh, she just was a judge. That means a judge is someone who is, is, is assigned to make wise decisions or to give wisdom. And so when we talk about the Deborah of life, the first symptom, and we're going to go through this really, really quickly. The first symptom is Deborah represents the counsel of God or the spirit of wisdom. Okay. Now, um, the Bible talks in Proverbs how wisdom being a woman, a woman builds her house. A foolish woman breaks, uh, um, um, destroys her house. And so the reason why you need a Deborah is because you should, and I put this on social media, uh, you should never make any uh, any decisions without first hearing from God first. Not necessarily a person hear from God. The Bible says, acknowledge your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct that path. And that means in everything. Don't just, don't just stop at the vision God gave you. Ask God for the way. What way should I take to get to the vision? A lot of people get that messed up. And so what, what Deborah represents is someone who operates in the wisdom of God. So we have to ask ourselves the question, if Deborah is representing the spirit of wisdom or wise counsel, what makes you a Deborah, right? And so what makes you a Deborah? How do I know that I'm a Deborah? Well, how is, 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 is very simple. You already have a track record of operating in wisdom, in the wisdom of God in your own life. Let me say that again. You already have a track record of operating in the wisdom of God in your own life. Now, let me just throw it out there. So when someone says, I'm your, De first off, Deborah's not walking around talk, walking up to talk about, I'm your Deborah, I'm your Deborah, you need me on your team. Deborah's, we don't submit resumes to be put on platforms, period. Let's say it again. Deborah's don't submit resumes to get put on platforms. We don't run after great men and women of God tell them, pick me, pick me. We don't send emails and text messages, all that kind of foolishness to get put on because you have a lifestyle that promotes you when it is God's time. So that eliminates about half of y'all right there. Okay. The other thing is, <laughs> uh, you cannot be truly a Deborah or operate in the anointing of a Deborah when your life is a ball of chaos and confusion and broken relationships. I'm going to come hard today. It's okay. I, it's all love. I just get excited about what I talk about. So if someone comes up to you and you can look by track record, right? Um, of 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 this chaos. Like you now you you uh, once you start hanging around, so I, I know somebody like that. I know people like that. Believe it. Their whole life is a is a ball of hot mess confusion. No judgment, but it just means that you don't operate in the Deborah anointing. Maybe in due season, right? 
maybe in due season that may come, but your life cannot be chaos. Your life, because what happens is it does not matter. It doesn't mean that your life will never be upturned to upside down in some area, but sometimes we go through things in life because we simply don't use wisdom. We have a right now mentality. We're not forward thinking. Wisdom makes decisions today, makes wise decisions today. No, I'm not going to reap the benefit today. I'm going to reap the benefit maybe sometime tomorrow or many years down the line. And so whenever you have someone whose life is kind of chaotic, they're always going from one thing to the next thing, have a vagabond spirit. They have no real foundation. Everything about them is chaos, confusion, and stress, anxiety, worries, uh, 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 anger, management issues. Then This is not someone that is a Deborah. Okay, <laughs> because Deborah, again, represents the wisdom and the wise counsel of God. And this is it a woman in particular who has the ear of the father and can give you wisdom or wise counsel based upon what God is truly saying. Come on, y'all. That's good to my soul. Okay. Now, another point, if you look at Judges chapter four, and I want you to read that on your own time. I'm going to go through this quickly. You got to be a Bible reader for yourself. Okay. So Deborah had her own realm of influence and success. The Bible says Deborah was a prophet. She was known as a prophetess. Uh, she was a wife. She was already known as a wife. And she was a judge of Israel. So she already had a reputation amongst the people. She already had leadership skills. She was not going to Barak, again, asking to be put on. She was not doing manipulative because she, she has no real vested interest into why she's going to be a part of your life other than being committed to the vision. Okay. This is for us who get, who connect with people who want something from us. If you are, uh, 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 uh if someone is giving you wise counsel, but it's going to benefit them in some way, they try to get next to you for what they can get from you. I remember um, I had a, a young uh, a friend that I was just connecting with and I thought, you know, we're really great friends and we're going to be real cool. And, I, and I, I don't know if I said this in my last teaching on Deborah, but I remember um, the Lord spoke to me as I was in prayer. He said, you got to watch people, Samaria, who only want to connect with you for what they can get from you. Can we, can we say, I mean, they don't want, they don't want you for they. So, but Deborah, watch this. Deborah has no vested interest in being on your team and being part of your vision other than the vision itself. She's not saying if I can hook up with Barack, I'm going to get more influence. I'm going to win more people. I'm trying to launch my business. I'm trying to launch my, 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 my social media platform. I'm trying to launch my, my ministry. I'm trying to launch something. So let me, let me connect with you. You connect with me. We connect together. And then we're going to do so that she has no ulterior motives because she already has her stuff together. She's already a boss in her own right. So Deborah's, uh, again, hold influence and success in their own way. And they're not giving wise counsel with underhanded motives. Come on, somebody. She's not a Haman. This is why you gotta watch people who have a spirit of divination or a Haman spirit. So what the Haman spirit will do is they want to connect with you. Watch this though. They want to connect with you for ulterior motives. Okay? For ulterior motives. So when you get to the Haman, Haman is going to give you wise counsel, not wisdom, a wicked counsel that's going to alleviate healthy people from your life to put himself in position. That's not a Deborah. She has her own influence. She got her own job. She has her own husband, brother. So she's not trying to say, I'm your Deborah because I'm trying to date you. You understand what I'm saying? Or I'm your Deborah because I'm trying to connect with you. And I want I want to, you know what I'm saying? Deborah's is not operating on the spirit of manipulation, power, and control. She already had her own influence as a leader within her community. Okay? And for those who don't want you to read the scripture very carefully, Barak, who was a the, the commander of the of the Israel army, he asked her, and he didn't ask, he said, I'm not going to go to war, basically, paraphrase and read it on your own time without you. She didn't go up to this and Barak, I'm Deborah. These are my skill sets, and I'm telling you not to go do anything. No, no. She was invited. The the commander, the man of God saw the wisdom that she operated and then he said i'm not going unless you come with me 
and it was not her husband. It was the commander. It was Barack, the commander of of of, of the Israelite army. He, uh, she was the wife, and I'm gonna probably butcher this name of a man named Lapidoth. Lapidoth. Okay, that was that was her husband. Okay, now it tells us the level of trust that she had. She's going to war. Hanging out with a man named Barack that was not her husband. I'm saying all that to say the level of trust and honor that her husband had because he was still she was still a submitted wife. Her husband had for her that he allowed her to go to the, the army with a man named Barack that was not her husband. There was no uh, perversion in that. It tells you again the character of who she is and the honor by which she walked in. Deborah is well respected. So not only is she well respected by other people, including men, including other men. Now, sometimes that can be difficult because uh, if you're a woman leader, sometimes something that's not always the case. You have a lot of influence over other women, but sometimes it may be harder to win the brothers. She had she was well respected amongst everyone in Israel, including the men. And this is during a time where, where women didn't have the same uh, uh, rights that men had. But she was well-respected. That tells you something. And so I gave you an example. And again, this is not brag. I'm just telling you how a TI is. Like, for me, in my life, my example, I told you how when I first started off in the mental health field, I worked on a long-term male unit. A lot of people don't know that. And how I was really, really scared. But I got there and I treated those guys. Some of them had criminal records. Some of them, I mean, they would show up from the toe up. And uh, yes, I am pretty. Uh, you know, you are free to disagree, not in front of my face. And that's your prerogative to disagree. Um, but I, 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 I always, and I wasn't, they wouldn't just treat me respectful. I said that because I'm, I'm pretty. They did that's That wasn't it. I always showed those men with, I treated them with respect. Um, those who I could, I gave wise counsel. I was true to my word. And so when I got up on that unit and it was the first few days, it was scary. Had, it was locked. It was a lock and key. It was body alarm and everything else. Those guys were, no matter what their criminal record was, no matter how disrespectful they were to other staff, not saying, not knocking anybody. Cause that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. I've been, in, I've been doing this for a hot minute. They always showed me respect. Good morning, Mr. Mary. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you, you know, and I, they always treated me with respect. So I say all that to say, when even when you're a woman and you operate, and they never came out, nobody came out of pocket. No one was like trying to flirt with me, like, oh, and all that. Uh-uh. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Mary. And I said, good morning. I always refer, refer to Mr. in the, your last name. Unless somebody said, hey, you can call me such and such. But hey, Mr. Johnson. Hey, Mr. John Doe. How, good to see you. Good morning. How are you? Uh, good to see you. I'm glad you had a good day. All Just, just treated people with respect. That was it. And guess what? I was treated with respect. So uh, another thing about Deborah is she's not demanding to be seen or heard. Deborah can work, and Deborah's work, Deborah's work speaks for itself. When you are truly who you are, your work speaks for itself. You don't have to play mind games, manipulative games, office politics, and get your marketing strategies to get in front of great people. You don't. Your work speaks for itself. Okay? And I told the story. Well, I'm not going to tell you. Well, tell you so God said to me, some, sometimes often people run out the great men and women of God being platformed. He said, but when I chose you, I'll send the people to you. Okay? Point number four, Deborah represents uh, not on the wise counsel of God, but the discerning of God. So Deborah can tell what is God and what is not God. She can tell what is God and what is a counterfeit. Deborah can discern motives. Now, again, discernment is not pessimism. It's not jealousy and envy. Because some people think I discern something. Something is off. And it ain't nothing off. It's just you. See, when you have a jealous and a paranoid spirit or envious spirit, you're going to see everybody through those goals. You, you side down everybody. You say, hmm, I don't know about that. But no, 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 Deborah, that's not a Deborah. That's just you in, in, in your unbroken wound. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you truly love God and, and, and your heart is pure from all that, 
you can discern. You can walk into a room. You say, yep, that's God. That's God. That's God. That's God. Look at that. Mm -mm, that ain't God. Mm -mm, let me tell you what that is. And Deborah is accurate. Let me tell you what you do when you got a Deborah. You may be like, ah, I don't know. Deborah does not slander her neighbor either, by the way. I talked about that in our, in our, in our previous session. You can, and when you can bank on what a Deborah says. So one thing I always tell people, if you don't agree with what I say, just take it back to God. He's going to confirm his word. So you be like, mm-hmm, yep. Oftentimes when I have discerned something, 99% of the time I've been right. Because I don't hear just my own stuff. Like I'm not going off what me and my motives. I hear God and I rightfully discern because I've heard from God first. Deborahs take their time before they speak. They don't have diarrhea of the mouth. Okay. So again, discernment is not criticism. It's not pessimism. Pet, pet, it's not hatred. Deborahs don't gossip. You'll never be able to discern when you have a gossiping spirit. Everything you see is going to be off because you have a gossiping spirit. Okay. All right. Uh, we said Deborah is trusted amongst other leaders. Okay. Trust is very important amongst leaders and is not always readily available. But now, for those of you guys know, for me, um, my when I transition to my private practice, I do see a lot of people, working professionals and leaders who are in their in their field of practice and in their ministries. And so one of the things that's really important is knowing who to trust. Who is your safe person? Because you show up in, as, as leaders in every area, like relationships, uh, corporate America, all those that you show up in leaders. Sometimes these people don't have safe spaces where they can be vulnerable. And so when you are a Deborah, you are a trusted leader amongst leaders. Let me say that again, just so we are clear. You are a trusted leader amongst leaders. Okay. Versus Jezebel, who is not a trusted person. Jezebel eats leaders alive for dinner. Jezebel's emasculate. Jezebel's are, 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 are not seeking wise counsel. They're seeking fans, people to submit to, people that will uh, worship them. Deborah has no iota of being worshipped or even being seen. A Deborah can walk into a room and never announce herself. Okay, she's that undercover boss. Hey. <laughs> okay. Debris Debris can carry their own weight. Okay? When you got a Deborah on your team, they um and I say that because sometimes when you when it comes to teamwork, you have you can have if you got the wrong team, then you have the right team, the right team will run your home run your whole spot for you. They really will if you got the right team. But the wrong team, you got maybe one or two people and they they hold it down for everybody. These people end up getting burnt out and toe up from the flow up because they just are just tired. They just tired. Okay. But Deborah is not someone that comes in that is just lazy. She gonna hold her own weight. As a matter of fact, Deborah can run races, run, run, uh she she can just run with the best of them and outdo them. Okay, because she can hold it down. Now watch this. Deborah brings peace. She brings wisdom and she brings a strategy. Jezebel's brings stress, anxiety, drama, chaos, and confusion. I know people like that. You know people like that? I sure do. Deborahs are completely different. They give you a strategy. This is what the Lord said. And that, that it'll be confirmation in your spirit, but it's also peaceful. Mm -hmm. All right. That's the, we keep moving here. We're almost done. Deborah hears instructions from God and then speaks. She does not give you her, her, just her opinion at random. She hears from God first, then speaks. Now, I don't, you know, I feel, I, well, people are not Deborah's. Well, I feel like, I don't think, so you, you'll find we, we live in a very presumptuous generation. They are very presumptuous. And so they think, because I think it, therefore it must be right. We give people counsel above our and beyond our actual scope of practice. I mean, you've never experienced this. You've never done this, but you have an opinion about that. People who are not Deborah's think their opinions matter and they think their, their opinions are giving someone advice, but you can't give someone advice where you've never been. I've not said this before. You can't offer a training course, uh, a training, uh, a coaching session and try to get people to a place you've never been. You can't sit down and coach someone how to, how to start a business if you don't have a business. I know people like that. You cannot... 
uh, 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 mentor someone when you have never mastered life yourself. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't make sense. But we live in a presumptuous generation that thinks it's just a hot thing to do. I know somebody like that. They want to start a, a coaching business and have never actually successfully completed a business, period. How can you coach people to launch their business and you don't know what the heck is going on here? You, you see what I'm saying? It just gets really weird. Okay, so re uh, 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 Deborah's bring resolution. They bring answers to complicated questions and just simple questions at that. They bring resolutions. They are the answer to the problem. And if they don't have the answer right away, they know how to seek the heart of the father because their heart is for God for the answer. This is why you need Deborah on your team, honey. Deborah's birth number eight, resolve disputes. Remember, they resolve, the, the whole point of, of resolving issues is the intention to unify. It is the intention to unify it is the intention to redeem and it's the intention to reconcile relationships. That is what Deborah does. De Jezebel's are intention are to divide, to conquer and control. We are not the same. Okay. Again, everyone needs a Deborah on their team. Why? Because every leader, every person in general has blind spots. Particularly the more successful you become. Okay. The more successful you become, you will attract more people. And when they get in front of you, honey, they'll be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. They, 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 if you super saved, they're going to be super saved. They put it on the front. <laughs> and so you need a Deborah because they can discern your blind spots. And everyone has them. Okay? Um, Deborahs are willing to go into... So remember, <clears throat> excuse me, the Old Testament is physical. The New Testament is spiritual. So your Deborah is willing to go into spiritual battle with you. So the Deborahs you can call and you say, hey, I'm having this struggle. They say, okay, let's pray. And then I pray these demonic wolf is and God curse them down. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of fear off of your life. You need Deborahs to go into spiritual battle. However, Jezebels are predatorial pretenders. They prey on people. They have monitoring spirits with the intention of deception. Okay, they prey on God's people. They strategize against God's people. They represent the spirit of witchcraft, mind control, and divination. We are not the same. Okay, so what should I do? What should I do? You say, I want to be a Deborah. One, you have to buy the Bible. We ought to ask God for wisdom. He's going to give it to us. You don't start off becoming a Deborah. You have to submit to the process. Because there are types of wisdom. There's the wisdom. There's the, the spirit gift of wisdom where you just know uh, supernaturally how to get things done. I had the spirit of wisdom. However, there is a part of wisdom that just happens through life experiences. And so Deborah's have, are not necessarily newbies to God. They're not newbies to Christ. Cause uh, you tend not to be as, uh, you have a lot of zeal, not a lot, of, lot not a lot of knowledge. Okay. The Bible says we perish for lack of knowledge, not because we can't jump and shout and hoop and holler. Okay. And so you have to be consistent. Be consistent in your life of, 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 of being obedient to God. As God begins to download more and more and more to you, you slowly begin to develop not only from the spirit of wisdom, but from that part of wisdom that just comes from life experiences that you can share with other people. You cannot sign up, I said this, or submit your resume to be a Deborah. You either are or you're not. Okay? You are or are you're not. And um, you can tell uh, when you have discernment with someone is not a devil. And that is not a shade to judge people. Sometimes the Bible talks about how you have to have an honest estimate of who you are. Don't overestimate who you are. But you have an honest estimate. You need a Deborah in your life. Um, Deborahs don't jock for positions. Remember Mark chapter 10, the sons of Zebedee, the mother came to Jesus. Uh, I need you to give my son from uh, these two uh, positions within your kingdom. And Jesus said, are you able to drink the cup that I'm able to drink from? And they said, yeah. What a foolishness thing to say. What a foolish thing to say. Jesus said, even if you could, if you could. Uh huh. He said, those positions of authority are already preset by the father. Jesus said, I don't even choose those positions of authority. I don't choose those positions of platforms. So if Jesus didn't, what makes us think we can? 
So Deborah's don't go up jacking for positions. So listen, I'm gonna be your I'm you, I know you need a prophet and I need you the priest in your business, and I'm in. Deborah's don't jack for positions. They're not trying to push themselves into positions that God has not ordained. Deborah's wait for rocks to ask them. Mm -hmm. You should have a body of work of completed work. Excuse me, let me say it again because I, I said it kind of fast. You should have a body of work of, of already completed stuff. Your work is going to speak for itself. Not your name, your work. Because you can have a name and there is nothing that uh, and there's nothing behind the name. Okay, you have a whole bunch of social media followings, and that means absolutely nothing. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'm I'm being sensitive about this, but there's a, a actor strike going on. The reason why I'm, I'm mentioning this for a reason. Get go with me here. And uh, they're saying that all these actors who have this this really really great name or these titles, but uh, most of them are broke. And I'm not saying it as a dig against them. It's just a system. And I hope that everything works out for them. But I say all that to say, you can't assume just because someone has a name or following on social media or they present well, they're Deborah. I used to have a friend and no shade to her. Everybody absolutely loved her. But behind the scenes, I knew who she was behind the scenes. And behind the scenes, but nothing like the person that she presented with on paper or I have an entrepreneur and I make all this money and I'm this, that, and the third behind the scenes. None of that was true. So you can't get caught up in uh, someone's notoriety or their name or how many, so how many people like them or, 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 you know what I'm saying? Some people don't necessarily have um, people to hold them accountable. They just have a whole bunch of fans. That means you got a million friends and none of them tell you your truth. Okay? Deborah's um, are not that. They don't have to be seen, heard, or known, but they still have that anointing. Um, so don't get caught up in someone's name or their followers or how many social media people they have or all those things. Uh, discern their spirit. Deborah's don't slander their neighbor, even when they're given corrective action. Jezebel's does. So Deborah may say, hey, this person has the right motive, um, but they're going about the wrong way. Let me tell you how, what's going on here. But they're not, they're telling you the truth without slandering their neighbor. Now, Jezebel's may say the same thing, but they're going to slander their neighbor. They're going to make accusations against people while they're trying to give you wicked wisdom. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, there's something else I was going to say and it just leaked my mouth. But anyway, Jezebel, oh, Jezebel. Okay, Deborah's can discern. And that is, is, is really, really key. Deborah's can discern what is true and what is not true. Okay? Uh, and they represent the wise counsel of God. Uh, Esther was a, Je was a Deborah, excuse me. The Proverbs 31 woman was a Deborah. Abigail was a Deborah, okay? Uh, in the Bible, read about Abigail. She's really, really good. Uh, who else was a Deborah? Some, I'm just, you know, there's so many examples. Um, so anyway, I think that's it for today. Make sure you check out, there's something else I was going to say and it just slipped my mind. Ugh. So I said Deborah don't slander other people. That is true. I can't think of it. Anyway, maybe I'll do a, a little reel on it if I, can, if I can remember. But anyway, so this is Dr. Samaria Cobra. You can go to my website and just check it out because I got all kinds of fun stuff at www.drsamariacobra.com. Uh, I do have a training website called www, uh, called Training Christian Leaders. You go to www.trainingchristianleaders.com. And of course, if you're located in the state of North Carolina, we are accepting new consumers. We do accept most insurances. And that is at www.kingdomcreativecounseling.com. Do not hit me up on any social media platforms in regards to that. I do not communicate with any past, present, or future clients on any type of social media platform. You can only go to the website. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good day. We'll be back in the day, another time, another banger. Bye, y'all. Bye.